<laughs> Look at us. We're like death. Well, hello, VW Lifers. Uh, Gary here with Jake. Garrison Jake. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? Dad, we're camping. Yes, we're out in the wilderness of Big Bend, down here in the Big Bend of Texas, on a cold December morning, but it's beautiful. 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 But we were thinking about, hey, you know what? We need to be about top 10 things you need to take when you go camping. Exactly. Because you know why? We're camping. Yeah. And so we've been doing this a long time. You've yeah. been since like you were in the womb. Can I say that on TV? No. Okay. So, <laughs> so stick with us and see what we do when we come up with the top 10 things you need to take when you go camping in your Volkswagen bus. So number 10 is a camping box or a chuck wagon or whatever you want to call it. Chuck box or whatever. We got, there's all kinds of different versions. So, we, so it's storage for your equipment for cooking. Cause you, hey, when you're camping, you got to eat, right? This is what you call a custom chuck wagon camp box made by our buddy Bela. Look at this thing. This is a work of art. And it's got like sliding out shelves. Uh, he puts a stove here, all his uh, heating of stuff here, utensils. So everything he has, he needs for cooking is t t contained right in this. Got some nice handles. This latch is nice and sturdy. He puts it on the table. Got a, a surface here for food prep. Uh, this is his debut, actually. And I think Baylor, what Baylor did, he saw this on a camping website and just replicated it and did a much better job. Building it itself is just amazing. So that's a chuck wagon that Baylor built right there. Then we have the Mad Jackson Special right here. This is the Camp Sherpa that's on Amazon. Look at this. This is very portable. It folds up real nicely. And everything labeled where he has all his goodies in here. MREs, hygiene, coffee, it's everything. The, the essentials there. He's got his cooking center on top. This is really nice. It's compact, very lightweight. That's a good thing, too, you want to think about when you're carrying stuff. You want to keep things as light as possible. You want to just overload your bus and, and everything like that. So that's a great setup right there. Amazon has these. This is called the Camp Sherpa. Pretty good little setup right there. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Wheel chocks. Wheel chocks. We'll come right out here. Get Ziggy's Bondo side. So right here, you got wheel chocks. Standard two by six formation. Long level, medium level, and a little stopper block. So it gives you three different level, or excuse me, two different levels you can put on, and that gives you able to level your bus for better sleeping. Helps you prevent from rolling down the hill, which would suck. Ask me how I know. <laughs> but a little stopper on the back. These are available in the Samba, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, you can just make those pretty easy. And they come in different sizes. Those are uh, one by or the two by sixes. Greg has some over there that are very uh, two by sixes. And then Bela on his Westie has like little Lego blocks. Or Matt Jackson. Or you just if you want to really go all out, <laughs> let's come over to Old Volks TV and see how they level their Volkswagen. If you want to get level like this, you just get stuck till you till get you level. Get stuck. Get stuck. How to level your bus? Okay, another thing, guys, when you're out, buses don't have that great a cruising range, and you sometimes kind of go off the grid a little bit, you're going to get in a situation where you might need some fuel. So there's all kinds of different versions. But uh, our friends at Roto Packs set us up with these awesome little packs. They hold up 1.75 gallons uh, of fuel. They're easily dismounted, easy to mount. I mean, these are going right straight to my, the rack here on Jerry. Just so nice. So that's one version you can do. So Roto Packs, those guys, what a, just a cool thing. These things are, are modular. You can stick as many as you want together, something like that. And I like the size, 1.75 gallons. Not enough to get you about 20 or 30 miles to the next fuel stop for sure. Let's look at some other versions of some fuel. So, of course, uh, there's the good old-fashioned jerry can, five gallons, metal can. The, uh, these are wonderful. Our buddy uh, Jason at Old Volks has made this fantastic holder here. Man, what a trick little setup off the side of the rack here. Holds a five-gallon jerry can, so that's another way, too. You know, any kind of container that you can put a gas can in, take fuel with you. You're going to need it. This is a nice little metal can. I usually leave this one, this can in jerry all the time. I think it holds a, a two and a half gallons. It's totally sealed up, so you can leave it inside. So that's another thing, too. Be careful with some of these cans. Can. If they don't seal up, they're gonna vent fuel off, so you don't want to keep them inside your bus unless you got something totally sealed up. Number seven, let the man eat. There's different ways of cooking. You can cook on the fire, you can cook on the sun, you can stick some meat up underneath your muffler to cook it. But another way is a Coleman stove or another kind of camp stove. And this one runs off of white gas. This Coleman's been around forever. Uh, Coleman, you know, this is the name in cooking, but they're big. And if you're not, a, you know, if you're just by yourself and you don't need two burners, there's other methods you can do. And so uh, let's go check those out. And this is the Gas One dual fuel portable stove. This thing can run off butane or propane and it's nice and compact, but he also uses it kind of like, as, when he cooks, it kind of heats up his bus. It's a win-win. It's a uh, 
Don't really want to be doing that with a Coleman because it's a little sketchy inside with open flames. But this is a little more controlled. Dual fuel really gives you some options to have, you know, cooking. Like I said, number seven, camp stove. You gotta be able to cook your food, boil your water, make coffee. Number Sorry. six is uh, an essential for everybody but me because I don't drink coffee. But I understand I have tons of friends who like to drink coffee. I like drinking hot tea, so I still need a source of uh, to boil water. I use an old school percolator. You can see that, okay, just to boil water. But nowadays, the old percolator style, well, it's kind of like me, out of style. All right, so what you need to move into one of these new things they call the fancy things called an AeroPress. Check these little jewels out. So here it is, the AeroPress. All I know is you put water down, you get the coffee in there, a couple of steps to tell you how many cups you're going to make. Put the water in there, it seeps in there, and all of a sudden, just like that, you got a magical, delicious coffee. Number five. Five. Shovels. And shovels Whoa. come in handy. Look how fancy his is. Mine's just a good digger shovel for like, uh, well, in case somebody gets stuck in the rocks or the mud over here, because this is probably going to be a use here in about another five minutes. <laughs> See, number whatever Chalks was, Jason. Yeah. Now, Jake's shovel on the other hand, it's you've versatile. seen this. It's versatile. It's versatile. You may have seen, uh, check link below here, to a uh, famous S shovel. This is the famous sh <laughs> shovel. So, say you, we're, we're away from camp. You don't want to ever do this right in the middle of camp. But you go away from well, away you from could, camp. you could, but it would be frowned upon. By your and you come over here, and you get a nice little... 90 degree bend in it. Go in here. And a pro tip, you want to be angled where your butt end is downhill. You don't want everything to flow on your shoes, your pants. Well, I say sh rolls downhill. That's true. What you would do is you get your hole going, make a little mount up so you kind of increase the artificial hill, drop trowel, you get that in there, and you place one cheek on and one cheek off, and you go to town. And this is called the shit shovel. It's great, take care of business, clean up, all that stuff, biodegradable toilet, toilet paper, and you just go like that. And again, that was number five, the shovel. You know, one of the necessities of everything out there, ladies and gentlemen, is you gotta have water. Rules of three, baby. Rules of three, yep, rule of three. What are the rules of three? Uh, three minutes without oxygen, three days without water, and three weeks, weeks without, without food. food. So. Oxygen, you got to supply yourself that, and then you're going to need water. So mm -hmm. we always bring water. Again, many different variations. This is an old five-gallon uh, Coleman thing here. I put it in a uh, old milk crate. So when you're out here, you just tilt it sideways, and you can, you know, wash your hands, wash your face. You got water for camping or cooking or whatever you need. So this is one easy version. It's all self-contained like that. Stores it inside that milk crate. You're good to go. Water is a necessity. You're going to need it for cleaning. You need it for drinking, for sure, and for cooking. So think that's one version of the water. We got other different versions of water too, of course. So here's another. Look at this big old igloo coop. This is uh, my goodness. This is six gallons. So that's an enormous size there. Lots of water. Good source of water there too. So they come in every shape and size, whatever you want to do. But it's a necessity. You got to have water when you're camping. It keeps you safe and uh, and helps your hygiene a little bit too along the way. And dishes, yeah. drinking washing, water, water for the, for the dogs. dogs. Yep. You name need it. water. Yep. That was your number. Volkswagen snow. Four. To live like a refugee. Number three. 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 Number three. The cooler. Hula. Down here in the south, we like them Yetis because uh, they're from Texas, so we like Yetis. The old man got these on the old discount rack when they were the display model all dented and whatnot. But the cooler, man. These things keep ice well. As you can tell, they got ice. You don't want to put your kid in here, it might kill him. That'd be bad. But you got to keep your perishables cold. Butter, sour cream, cheese. Oh, cilantro. Cilantro. Oh, yeah, baby. But keeping your food cold, that's important. You don't want it to go bad. Pork chops, veggie sausage. But you want to keep that stuff nice and cold so it doesn't go bad. And doing that with a cooler, with good ice, that way you don't have to keep spending more money on ice and it's durable. This thing can get thrown around on a bus. It can I mean, right over here. Matt Jackson's right here just sitting on rocks. He's not worried about it getting damaged. It's going to be just fine. And when we went to New Mexico this past summer, I got up to like 110 degrees in our buses. In our buses, cold water was so nice for pouring on your face, for drinking, keeping hydrated. But uh, a good cooler that keeps ice is something that really, really helps you out in the long run. Number two of UW lifers, this sleeping bag. <laughs> it is nice and warm. This bad boy I've had since I was like 10, so you know it's warm. 
But these things are great. Sleeping bags keep you warm. When you sleep well, your day starts off well and you start warm. Uh, it gets cold, man. I kind of got a comforter too, just for a little extra warmth and padding. If you're gonna camp, might as well camp comfortably. Sleeping bag keeps everything warm and you can like do your little hoodie and put your hoodie like this and you, like, you still breathe. But you're nice and warm. Oh man, it's a great. Sleeping bags are great, but that's number two. The sleeping bag. One of the newest sleeping bags out there, you get this off of Amazon. This is a, a zero degrees uh, centigrade or Celsius, a 25 degrees Coleman. And look how, the, what I like about this is look how compact it is. It comes with this nice little case, very compact, easy to, to, to carry with you. These things are lightweight, but again, man, you can't beat a nice sleeping bag. Spend the money on a good bag. It's important because otherwise it could be a matter of life or death. <laughs> mm, so well, that, that was nine. Yeah, that was. Whoops. <laughs> it was top 10, wasn't it? It is top 10, but you know what that means, Pops? I know exactly what that means. What does that mean, AJ? We need help. We do need help. So where it's up to you guys to come up with that number one thing that you need when you're camping in your VW bus. What do, What is it you guys think it's, that you need? It, what are we missing? Yeah, it's something that could be obvious that we're like, oh, we're missing. Or it could be that little detail that we're like, exactly what we need. It could be, it could be. So there's a, lots of things out there. So make sure you uh, uh, comment in there and like, hey, exactly. let us that, know in the comments. Yeah, that, hey, you guys are forgetting about this or you, hey, what about this or something like that. So we guys, we know you guys are uh, uh, out there camping and enjoying it and all. So man alive, we sure appreciate it. That's it for you guys. Make sure uh, you like and subscribe. Tell your aunts, tell your uncles, tell everybody you know about VW Life. We do this for you guys, the VW community. Go out in your buses, go out in your Beatles, go camping. Exactly.